Hi, I'm Alexandra Greenwald of Fashion Styles here in New York City, and this is my very first style interview. And I have with me here Kristen Arnett, who is an international echo makeup artist and also the founding editor of Green Beauty Team. So, Kristen, thanks so much for joining me on this Sunday morning. Thank you, Alexandra. <laughs> So I had a couple questions for you about your style. I'd like to know, first of all, how would you like to feel in your clothing? I think the, the thing that I most want to feel is this kind of wonderful blend between being very powerful and edgy, but still keeping femininity and um, something really pretty and beautiful. Yes, yes. I think we all, as women, still want to maintain our our femininity. Yeah. And what words would you use to describe your style? You know, it, it honestly it changes depending on the situation. Um, I feel like my style is kind of a chameleon, mm -hmm. where if I have a, a tea party to go to and I can wear a big puffy dress. <laughs> Like some woman from the 60s or the 50s, you know, I, I'm totally into it. Um, but if I'm going to, let's say, a rock concert in the Lower East Side of New York, then I kind of dress the part too. So it just, it depends. Yeah, I'm a little bit like that too. I feel like you have to dress based on the environment you're going into. Yeah, and it's fun to it's fun to change. I don't want somebody to be like, oh, there's Kristen wearing her boring thing she always wears. <laughs> And, you know, as, as someone who represents a brand and a business, how would you like the world to see you and your sort of personal brand? You know, I feel like because my brand is me and my personality that I definitely want my expertise to show through that I have spent well over a decade, I think maybe even going in towards two decades now, in this business of makeup and beauty, and that that expertise comes through and sort of the power and the messaging behind that, that there's confidence. But um, at the same time, while there is that, I do want to feel approachable. I want to feel real. I want to mm -hmm. feel like a person who, you know, understands and lives a normal life. Yeah. There is reality that sets in. Yeah, and I go to the store and haul my groceries home, and, you know, I can't always be in four-inch stiletto heels doing it, so. <laughs> yeah, I think as New Yorkers, we both find that the shoe challenge is very big and dictates a lot of what you wear. Yeah, yeah, because it, you just, I mean, I see these girls, or I should call them women. Well, sometimes you never know. Sometimes you're wrong. Um, <laughs> They're getting younger and younger. Um, you know, wearing like four, literally four inch heels, trying to make it through these cobblestone streets, and you see them hobbling in pain. I'm like, that doesn't make your outfit look good if you look like you're in pain. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I've got to be comfortable. I've got to find shoes that are both cute and functional. I'm the same way. I'm I'm in stores. I'm running around, and I've got to I got to take care of my feet, but I got to look cute too. And so what colors, you know, represent, what colors do you think represent your brand? Maybe not necessarily like that you would wear, but like, you know, your branding colors, your website colors, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, the, you know, I try to keep sort of a balance of a lot of white because it is so clean. And then adding in, um, I just changed the Green Beauty Team logo to being this gorgeous sort of peacock blue green mm almost like a teal, you know? Um, so it, it kind of hangs out in this very ethereal sort of uh, blue-green, you know, evocative of the water and the nature and the land. And then I throw in a lot of gray because gray is basically my favorite neutral in the world. And occasionally I put in a warmer, um, I think more like a saffron or sort of a a ready orange, just to give it something a little bit different. Um, and then, you know, always staying with skin tone colors, like beige and, and not pink, but like that, that sense of a blush. Mm -hmm. Or skin. Yeah, skin, exactly. Right. Skin tone. Which makeup and, is and all for, about skin. 
That's the first and, thing. Yeah, and very skin tones, you know. So it doesn't yeah. have to be like what we consider to be the band aid color, which is beige. <laughs> it can be a variety of shades within the skin tone family. And so, how have you in the past uh, brought that into your person style, or have you have you felt like you've meshed the two? Um, yeah, it's it's really funny because. Uh, I have this rule for myself that I'm not allowed to buy any more gray sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> I instantly am attracted to gray sweaters because it is one of my favorite neutrals. And of course I do wear a lot of black, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it absolutely spills over. Even if I'm buying a pillow for my house, I'm like, ooh, look at the peacock teal color. I have two in my bedroom right now. So <laughs> it, it spills over my personal style, in my house, everywhere. Um, because it is me. It is my brand. It is how I want to feel. I just am not somebody who could create, like, a pink website because I, I, I'm not that person. I'm not wearing pink all the time. Not that pink is bad, but it's just so foreign for me yeah and what do you think is your your biggest style challenge at this moment hmm you know I think more and more I'm doing um, media appearances and videos and even things like this and I feel like there's an expectation that every time I do something I can't repeat what I'm wearing mm. and as a as both a business person with my own budget for clothing and not a stylist on hand who will just give me stuff right. and as an eco um, let's say as somebody who's very conscious about the world I don't want to be going out and just buying and buying and buying for the sake of buying so it's it's a little bit challenging trying to figure out how to keep within those ethics of not over purchasing and still meeting that thing of being interesting on camera and not repeating too much, like I've got two items in my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're in an era where we're all being a little bit more careful, especially post, you know, 2008, where uh, I think we've kind of reached a point where we're questioning, you know, what do we really need? What are we going to wear? What's going to be, you know, of use in our life? And then what's redundant? Uh, yeah. I, I, I applaud Michelle Obama, who's been really, really great about recycling items and showing us Americans that even, you know, with an unlimited budget and even as a big, powerful public figure, uh, as a woman, there's still going to be repeated items. So I think uh, there's, there's no reason we can't wear the yeah. same thing, you know, multiple times, especially if that item is really on brand. I right. love that you mentioned teal. Because when I was uh, creating a Pinterest board for you, one of the things I was thinking was, okay, for you, I get a, a, a because I, I know you, and I've known you for a couple of years, and I know your brand, I always think, because you've got green in your name, I always think of green as, as the green and white as like the most, I'd say, powerful or anchoring colors in your brand. But I was, I was thinking, I'm like, wow, you know, as doing someone doing more media appearances, and it depends, obviously, if you're on camera. You know, some colors are more camera friendly than others. Uh, and I was like, wow, you know, green is one of those colors that's like really tough on camera. It's not so camera friendly. But teal is actually incredibly camera friendly. So that could be something that you could sort of hunt for and keep your, you know, eyes on the lookout for. Um, because again, it's going to be very friendly on your, on your coloring like with your eyes and your hair, but also evocative of your brand. And I think that's what uh, your challenge is going to be in like merging, merging the two worlds, keeping the both worlds happy. Yeah. So that brings um, me to my next segment. We're going to do some screen sharing if I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> I guess you'd be the, the video guinea pig, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> All right, so screen sharing, yay, start screen share. Okay, so here I went and made you a little, uh, oh, it's not letting me scroll down. Hold on, let me try that again. Mm. Desktop. All right, let's see. Oh, no, that's not very friendly. <laughs> It's like one of those uh, mirrors that you look into and you got all the mirrors behind you. Right. 
Who's that? Sorry. All right, okay. So we're not able to see too far down. Anyway, so I created a Pinterest board for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of, one of uh, the things that I wanted to, to pull up, which is not letting me do. So can you... Let's see if we can do it like this. Ooh, I see something changed. Oh, did oh. you? There we go. Okay, so there's something called uh, Color Chart. It's all about uh, what is the meaning behind colors. And, uh, you know, I like to, to show all my clients this, that, again, like you picked a blue, and a blue is represents trust, smart, calm, faith, natural, stable, and power. Which wow. to me is like so in alignment with what you were talking about, about being powerful and feminine and totally. stable. And then green, you know, echo friendly. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. Soothing, natural, uh, envy, balanced, restful. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I love this because it's just, it gives us just sort of another take on color. Right. Let's see. All right. So we're going to have to do this. That's, that's super interesting that uh, teal is, is a mix between the blue and the green because it really does highlight most of the things that I would like to translate about my brand. Yes. Yes. Apart and from when, the envy and jealousy. Yes. And when I was going through uh, looking for outfits for you and I, I, fo I mainly focused on uh, dresses just because on camera and at media appearances, Dresses put a, a really good foot forward versus separates. You know, it's it's always going to sort of um, elevate your status just a little bit more. Going to give you like a cleaner, stronger statement than say three pieces. Why why do you think that is? I mean, I'm very attracted to dresses, and I like wearing dresses. Um, well, why do you think dresses more powerful. I think part of it is is it's one statement. It's not three statements. Mm. Um, if you've ever, uh, you know, watched political figures, they're very also careful. If they're wearing separates, they're wearing separates of the same color. So they're doing, you know, one color head to toe. And as, as a shopper in this day and age, it's just so much easier to find, uh, you know, a dress in a great color than it is to find, you know, three pieces in that same color. Right. So it's ease and it's also cl clarity of the message. Um, and then, of course, it depends on how much of you is seen. Like in a situation like this where we're just literally like boobs and up, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really all about the top. Yeah, because you know, I see you're wearing like this amazing necklace and you've got a lot of interest going on here. It's really pretty. Well, like that's part of what my job is, is like figuring out, okay, like what's going to be seen? You know, a lot of times... I will see people on stage and they, they will, may have a great detail like on a leg or they have a great pair of shoes, but it's, it's lost on an audience. Like again, you're, you know, if you're going to be speaking in front of a lot of people, you're going to want to think about, you know, the person in the way back of the room, can they see you? And then also like from, you know, essentially like here up because that's where people are going to want to focus. Right. So... I wanted to bring this to light. So this is your, this is colors for you, which again, we're seeing some overlap here in the teal mm -hmm. blue family. It's a s soft summer. Uh, I haven't draped you officially, but I'm, I, I think based on just seeing you a couple, you know, many times in person, I think this is correct. Uh, but everything's kind of muted and soft, softer. Yeah. Uh, the challenge will be, and again, like when you're at a media appearance, you're going to want to make a really strong statement. So you might have to punch up some of these colors a bit, uh, just for that appearance. Right. So are you saying then, uh, like for instance, uh, I'm just trying to like point out a color in an easy way, sort of the lavender tone rather than yeah. being so pastel lavender give it like more depth so it has more power. Right, so so for example, this um, sort of deeper purple in the lower right hand corner, mm -hmm. uh, I would opt for a shade like that, you know, or even maybe go a little bit deeper. 
Uh, again, like a teal, you want to find like a really uh, a strong-ish teal. Uh, and then again, like all of your browns are very muted. Right. Um, which, which is pretty. I mean, like the top, <laughs> I'm trying to count. There, there's the first column and the second column. Yeah. So that second brown swatch at the very top. Um, it's beautiful color. I think it's quite elegant when I see women wearing like head to toe, more of a muted, almost a camel kind of look. Yeah, it's kind of like a rosy brown. A yeah. dusty brown, yeah. That's so, a really good makeup color, by the way. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's like, no, isn't that great for eyeshadow? Like it's a, an amazing eyeshadow color. And it's also good um, on the cheeks as a bronzer. Oh, wow. Yeah. I got to throw in some of my work, too. <laughs> yeah, you should. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I love, I love, I love browns for in-person appearances, like networking events. But I find, you know, for speaking engagements, uh, it's really better to wear more of a statement-y color and less of a neutral. Okay. So more like the stuff on the on the right side of the little chart that I see. Yep. Yep. Okay. More of the, like the fun colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things yeah. that get you noticed. Things that get you noticed, exactly. Like, here, I'll, I'll bring up a teal that I, that I pulled for you. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So, wanted to know uh, your thoughts about something like this. Well, the color is awesome. I love it. Um, I I think that the that the I don't know what you call this ruching. the ruching detail. <laughs> the ruching would be good to you know. I have a very small chest, so that would probably be good for yes. it. Yes. Um, I would prefer it a little bit longer, but that's oh, the just top to be like longer. These. Yeah, yeah. I did pull this for that very reason. I did want to show you that uh, ruching and any sort of like volume adding detail in the bust super yeah. great. And you want to sort of stay away from anything that's really high neck with no mm. detailing because it's just going to flatten. I'm I'm in that same category, so I know. All about adding, <laughs> adding bust, <laughs> adding bust. Yes. So, uh, just tell me from this board, what what were the things? Was there anything that you were like, oh my god, I love that? Yeah, um, that jacket that was from Ellie Tahari. That was actually wait, gray. Uh, gray or it was a, it was a teal jacket right there. Oh, this one. Yeah. Can you see this? Yes. Okay, great. So it is following my screen, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, um, this jacket. I love this jacket, and I think I'm going to have to buy it now. Because <laughs> it has a little bit of that edge cool with the zipper and the asymmetrical, but the fabric is, it appears to be, and I might be wrong, but it appears to be kind of a more classic, sophisticated um, texture. Mm -hmm. And then the color is just gorgeous. So I loved everything about this. And Ellie Tahari and I always get along. <laughs> yes, I know. I am a big, big fan of Ellie Tahari. I'm always like, I always have a massive crush on at least a couple of pieces each season. And I yeah. find that it's also really, really good for my clients. And I did uh, think, uh, I've seen this piece in person. So I've seen the fabric in person. And that was another reason why I uh, pulled it up for you. And I also felt like it was a nice mix a feminine and yet sort of like playful and edgy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This this jacket for me is, I'm going to have a hard time now because I'm going to go want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go buy it. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, just be strategic, you know. The nice thing about Pinterest, I find, is it lets you see everything together and so you're able to see what's really strong and right. what's kind of weak. Right. Oh, and There's, Nanette Lepore. You like Nanette Lepore, too. I do, yeah. I have a few Nanette Lepore pieces. Yeah, I love Nanette Lepore. Great stuff. Great stuff. I also, what I did is I, I went to your own Pinterest boards, and I mined them for inspiration, because I, I saw that you got some amazing visuals on your Pinterest. Mm, and yeah. for all of you listening, follow her, Green Beauty Team. Her boards are amazing. I really like this yellow one, this architectural one. Yeah. 
It's funny because I pulled that yellow one uh, when I was designing the new Green Beauty Team website. The yellow and the blue and the white, it just popped. Yeah. And let's now go to your segment. Like, let's, here's your site right here. Mm -hmm. You can see that, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. I'm finally mastering this screen share. <laughs> So what was a challenge like when you were building this, like trying to get everything in? <laughs> yeah, trying to get everything in and, you know, websites are a whole different communication. Um, I'm constantly tweaking the format and everything with it, but it's the idea of putting in color but not overwhelming the senses. Mm -hmm. So you see that there is a yellow in there, but I really had to tweak that yellow. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, that's I neat. Had to tweak it's... that yellow to make it the right yellow on a website because when I tried to make it the yellow that you just saw on the Pinterest board, it was shocking and horrifyingly like a highlighter yellow that didn't translate well and it didn't work well. So it's tweaking everything to kind of get the feeling there without being so overwhelming or literal. Well, I'm also really liking uh, your usage of gray and also Thanks. how, you, you know, I love the teal and the green beauty team and then the, also the green of the leaf. And I think it's, it's, it's subtle, it's subtle and it's, you know, greenness, but still sends the message and yet keeps it really elegant and clean. Thank you. Well, that's, that was the goal. Definitely. Yeah. And there's your gorgeous photo. Yay. <laughs> your eyes are popping so nice in that shot. Thank you. You wouldn't believe it. There's a secret behind this photo. Um, it looks as if, you know, I'm in a field. Yeah. But this, this was shot in New York, uh, right off of the West Side Highway. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so, I thought this was, like, in Kansas or something. I know. There's actually, like, a whole four-lane highway of cars going behind me. We just happened to find the one part that had these beautiful sea grasses growing near the river. Wow. So it's like high, <laughs> high line area. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So just wrapping up, was there anything else that you wanted to sort of highlight from the Pinterest or, or had questions about? Um, questions? Not necessarily. I, I thought it was really interesting some of the things that you picked out that um, the that look really great when I see them that are probably not things I would have gravitated towards in a store. Um, mm. But I also see the power and the simplicity behind the dress. Uh, you know, when you explain it the way that you did about how you're not making more than one statement, that that's going to change a lot of how I, how I shop now. Mm. Because I can see the power visually on this board. Yeah. Well, separates, I mean, separates are, are difficult to navigate, and I find that a lot of times in our closets, they're the most challenging part of our closet. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, wait, uh, do I have that item? Is it in the dry cleaner? What goes with this? What doesn't go with this? Uh, so I find that there's just so many times where there's a lot of confusion in our closets, and it causes a lot of stress versus... So many times my clients, they'll say to me after work, and they, it's so easy now. I just grab a great dress. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's just easy. I just, I just grab and go and then accessorize instead of yeah. figuring out, trying on. And the other thing I like about dresses that, that stretch or wrap is that if there's any sort of weight fluctuation, which... Pretty much is everybody. I mean, we all fluctuate for a certain amount of pounds, being a woman, menstruating, hormones, all that. So like a wrap, the thing that's so nice is that when it changes, you just, you know, tie it a little differently. It expands or contracts with you. Right. So again, I, I have some great vintage Diane von Furstenberg wrap dresses from my mom. Oh, lucky and you. And so I do wear those from time to time. Like you. Well, I'm so, I have so much gratitude towards you to taking the time today to meet well, with thank me you. via Google Hangout. 
Yeah, and I actually, you know, I always learn something from you. So it's really great to get your insight and feedback and reinforce some things that I was already doing, but I probably didn't know why I was doing them. And yeah. give me some suggestions for making things better. Awesome. Well, have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too, Alexandra. Bye, bye Kristen. Bye. Bye. <laughs>